Today I'm starting something I've wanted to build for years, a fully engineered CNC milled giant scale Grum and Goose flying boat. But here's the twist. This isn't a kit and it's not a simple foam board build. This is a complete design to flight series. We're taking the Goose from a clean plasticity model all the way through to a flyable aircraft. Now in this video, I'm blocking out the base 3D model. You'll see me cleaning it up a little bit, fixing some geometry, and then later I will be bringing this back into Fusion 360 for high detail surfacing, hollowing, and full CNC cam work. But this is only the first chapter. Over the next episodes, we're going to size it, engineer it for strength, carve plug molds, test lightweight PLA parts, and explore some finishing techniques nobody really shows you on YouTube. If you've ever wanted to build a giant scale airplane from the ground up or learn the real workflow from concept to CNC chips, well this is the series. So let's start with this master model. There's a couple things in here that the model seemed kind of like it would be easy to design, but it really wasn't. There were quite a few things that I struggled with. One was this window assembly on the front from the sketches. I had to look at photograph after photograph to get this thing uh, to work. And um, that's as close as I think I can find based on what I've seen. And the other thing, weirdly enough, was this nose. Uh, I can fix this in Fusion 360, but I'm not happy with it. You can see the tangency curves on this. I've got a little bit of a problem here. And so I can fight with it in Fusion a little bit, and I can fight with it back here, this transition or fillet that I'm struggling with in Fusion as well. Let me get to it. There, you can kind of see that there's a problem. I'm perfectly capable of finishing this in Fusion, but what I want to do instead is I want to make my life easy. I'm going to throw it into plasticity, fix some of these curvature issues, and get this model put together. So I'm going to export it here. And Fusion's also given me a little bit of trouble with this model because it's saying there's some unconverted forms in here, and there's not. But what I did find out that I could do is I can convert or export it out to a DWG file. And if I do that, then I can take that and I can export that into plasticity and get all my geometry. So that's what I'll do. And guys, so here it is. It's Fusion model was exported to DWG. So it's obvious I really like this software. If you'd like to try it, check out the link in my description of where you can get a 30 day free trial. And also if you like it as much as I do, uh, use my discount code Red Baron for a 10% reduction in the fee of the software. Just on this model, so we're going to clean this up a little bit so we can just start working with and the dwg was imported into plasticity and when i bring it in everything is visible including the infinite number of sketches that were used on this model so we're going to clean this up a little bit so we can just start working with what it is i want to change i don't need these anymore i've got the physical model and if i recreate something i will do it right here in this program so these go bye bye now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change my shader mode, turn x-ray mode off. You can see I already deleted this front face that I didn't really like. And I don't need this little guy here. And we will work on this back section as well. Start with the front though. First thing that I want to do here, I'm going to just simply go to the side elevation. No, nope, I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to go to selection two. I'm going to touch on that, shift D, and then right click. Now I have a sketch line right where I want it. Now I'm going to go to selection four. It's picking up the whole model. I'm going to say alt J to unjoin. Now I'm going to delete this face by hitting X, this face by hitting X. All right. Now I'm simply going to go from selection mode two, 
going to grab both these lines, hit J to join. I'm going to touch on that center line. And then I'm going to go to this side, J to join. And now I'm going to say loft. And I do want my tangency control to be G1 in this case. And you'll see how it's gone down below this, but that's okay. I'm just going to right click. Now I have already a much smoother transition here. Now I can touch this part, hit C for cut, and extend. And once I do that, I can trim this one little piece that didn't work. I will do the same for the other side. Four, cut. And there we have it. And now let's do the same thing. Cut from there to there. We have this little sliver to remove. Use this face to cut this side. That little sliver to remove. Now we're in much better shape. Now I'm going to touch all of these and I'm going to join them together. Now let's use X nerves here. XN brings up X nerves. I'm going to touch on this edge, holding my shift key down now, touch on this edge and this edge. Going to make sure to grab these little components there. Not component, but segment there and there. Now, what if we said G1? What if we said G2? Let's try G2. And let's turn off edges. You can already see here now that my curvature on the front of this model is many times better than what I had before. This is why I like working in this program. So I wanted to show you guys this here. This was an awesomely beautiful model that I was able to find um, on the Sketchfab website. I've had a really hard time finding uh, samples of these models, images or anything that I could to model from, especially when you get into the details. I mentioned earlier about uh, the windshield on the front of this uh, and also struggled a little bit with the back. And so when I found this model, I was super stoked. You can actually buy this model if you get on the Sketchfab website. It's really kind of not the point of what I do. I'm wanting to make my own. But it was an incredible uh, tool for researching how at least someone else interpreted some of these. Now, the mistake that I made was that I thought that this thing was going to be absolutely dead accurate. And... Um, so when I looked at this back fillet section that I was going to have to work on, I assumed that this was modeled correctly. It looks correct from you know, many of the images, uh, but if you'll notice, there's, um, it's kind of a, a hard bulge right here that was modeled into this, and a little bit of a heavier crease as it goes by. And I actually remodeled the back of my vertical stabilizer thinking that this was correct but then I looked at some other videos that I found of one being restored and I realized in fact no this is much smoother transition but this curvature line right here does exist and so you'll see me putting this back into my model so the next few seconds here are just uh, you sh me showing you how I am using the plasticity tools to create sketches for uh, putting this back section back in the way that I really wanted it. Obviously you can see the mouse picks that I'm using and you can also see the keystrokes that I'm using to do this to give you an idea of how I'm putting this back in exactly the way I want it.
here you see me using the xNURBS function to create this area. So this is a good lesson in keeping going with it because it first looks like it's completely out of hand and not what I want. But I'm going to completely uh, work through my boundaries and then I'm going to change the curvature of the top and this front fillet. And when I do that, boom, I get the perfect curvature, exactly what it is that I wanted in this vertical fillet all along. Glad I stuck with it. I'm happy with the results. So where to from here? Well, as much as I love plasticity for its modeling ability from here forward, I will be moving this project back into Fusion 360. And in the next episode, I will be talking about setting this model up with a manufacturing model and setting the control paths to actually mill this fuselage with a large format CNC mill. I'm literally going to be carving this thing from that pink Home Depot XBS foam you put on houses. So if you'd like to see where this model goes from here, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and you can watch how this model progresses.